My name is Susanna Bidgood. I'm a PhD student at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge, and my exhibit name is Virus Wars. Being a scientist is really fun. Um, you are literally paid to discover stuff, and it's a very creative job, so you actually have to think beyond what is current knowledge and imagine how the world might work. And then you need to design an experiment to test your idea um, and physically do it, so it's a lot of doing stuff and thinking, and then to bring it all together, you get the result and you have to kind of fit that into the puzzle of what's already known and work out what your new result tells you about your discovery. Two people inspired me to become a scientist. Um, the first of them was my dad. Um, although he did science at uni, he wasn't a scientist professionally, but he had a very inquisitive mind. He just questioned why the world worked, how it worked all the time. And that inquisitiveness was really infectious. The other person who inspired me was a teacher I had when I was quite little. He was a science teacher. And he'd come into the classroom, often clasping um, a copy of New Scientist and with the latest article that he was really excited about. And he'd sit down, he'd read us the article, and then he'd teach from that article. We never felt like we were following a curriculum. It was just about the latest discovery and how that related to what we needed to learn. If I did not work in my particular area of science, I think I'd really like to be a geologist. Um, they are people who study rocks and the reason I like to be a geologist is they get to travel to amazing parts of the world. So one of my closest friends has been to the Himalayas four times in the last two years to study rocks for her PhD, so I'd really like to do that. If I was not a scientist, I think I'd still like to be doing something that's science related. So I'd probably like to work for a popular science magazine like The New Scientist or Scientific America and write about things that people are discovering and communicate that to a more um, wide audience, perhaps non-experts. If I could go back in time, I'd really like to meet a lady called Elizabeth Blackwell. She was the first woman in the United States of America to get a medical degree in 1849. And I'd really like to talk to her about her experience. When she applied to medical school, she was turned down again and again and again. And she finally got accepted because the principals of a particular medical school in upstate New York didn't think they could really decide, so they put it to a vote of the male students. The male students thought it was a joke and all voted yes, and she got in. Um, and she was actually one of the founding members of the first medical school for women in London. And I'd love to ask her about her life and what it was like to be the first female medic. In my free time, I do lots of things. Uh, for example, last weekend I ran a half marathon, but I just really love sports. So I play a lot of a sport called Ultimate Frisbee, and I love the outdoors, skiing, sailing, hiking. I also just enjoy being with friends, whether that's in the pub or doing something outdoors together. The first science that I remember doing was an ecological study of Boggy Bottom. Boggy Bottom was this boggy area at the back of my junior school and our science teacher took us out there with lots of nets and buckets and we collected bugs and anything we'd find that was living in this pond and then we spent a science project looking at what we found. To a school child who's interested in science, I would say stick at it. Science in the classroom can be quite dry. You have to learn a lot of stuff. But actually science, when you get to be a scientist, is incredibly creative. And maybe try and find ways of being more creative with your science. So join an astronomy society outside the classroom or get yourself onto something like a women in science and engineering course that you can do in your summers and just see what the opportunities are out there for you. I would inspire a child or a non-scientist to be interested in the work I do by telling them about it. So every day I get up and I go into work and I work on antibodies, which are little... Uh, molecules inside our body, they're the centuries of our bodies. They are patrolling our bodies and looking out for diseases. And the research that I do is understanding antibodies better so that we can potentially make better medications. <laughs> so every day I work towards something that one day will impact all of our health. The most surprising experience I've had in my career, undoubtedly, was a couple of years ago now when we published a new scientific finding. And my boss had been asked to go on the radio that morning to talk about it. And I kind of thought that's all there would be. But when I went into Asda that morning to get the local newspaper, I discovered that actually it was on the front page of some of the national newspapers. And we spent the rest of the day with uh, news crews coming into the lab. And it was a complete surprise and a big flurry of activity. And then the next day it was all over and we carried on doing science. The discovery or invention that I really couldn't live without is actually not a very new discovery. I really value my bicycle. It gets me everywhere I go, and I love travelling to work in the outdoors and not having to drive or take a train. I think the most important thing yet to be discovered is a vaccination against HIV. It is killing millions of people around the world, and we need to find a way to treat that disease.